Howdy, partner, and welcome to a Paradise Lost podcasting channel. This here's your marshal, Cody. My pronouns are he, they. Joining me as we put the weird into Weird West is... Hi, I'm Christina. Um, pronouns are she, they is fine as well. I am playing Emerson Drez. She runs the local theater, and as you will come to learn, she has kind of a paranoia or phobia of birds. Hi there, everyone. My name is Brendan. My pronouns are he, him. And in this game, I'll be playing John Liberty, the high kicking sheriff of Caliente. Hi, my name is Britt. My pronouns are she, her. I'm playing Cassidy Burke, but her friends can call her Sid. Cassidy's a widow who owns a bar and she always carries a Zippo, but doesn't smoke. Hey, guys. My name is Tyler. My pronouns are he, him. And I'm playing Jackie Dawson. Kindly and gentlemanly barber of Caliente. Hey, this is Michaela. She, her, playing Doc Caval. Uh, and Doc, she is the town doc who does the best she can in these violent times to walk the line of not adding to the cycle of death, which can be difficult sometimes. Hi, I'm Alex. I go by he, him. I'm playing Samuel Mammon as the town preacher, a man of spirit and soul and family. And without further ado, we present to you Deadlands, a fistful of ghost rock. Samuel's father and call uh, disappeared in a poof of smoke with his wife. Going to Montana, or so he says. That's what they're calling these days. Let's see. The only... Who all was there? Like, present, where the bullshit happened? Well, Emerson yeah. shot the bird, so I know Emerson was there. Yeah, I feel like at the end there, you, you were like, I'm going to go get the others, or whatever. Yeah, at, at the end, I was like, alright, just stay here, I'm going to go wake everybody up, and I, like, beat on the doors, and just quickly... Um, which like birds are evil. They're like I don't remember exactly what I said, but just been like fuck birds and oh, fuck oh, bang, bang. Off. But also like I think most people got woken up by the shotgun blasts at the church. How while well, uh while Emerson's grabbing everyone, Samuel Lily is hysterical. Um uh, that's the the best way to put it. Uh, she is, Invisible. yeah, she's in the uh, she's in the corner of your uh, like behind your podium, hyperventilating. Uh, how do you calm her? Samuel goes over and basically like sits next to her and puts an arm around her and just, um sits there for a moment and just silence for like a little bit like 10 15 seconds maybe um and then he just I'll get her back I'll get her back she uh she leans over in into your lap uh yeah Samuel just like holds her you know let lets her cry I mean pretty intense thing and I mean he's trying to struggle through it himself something something lord's plan yada yada yeah uh yeah so everybody else uh y'all follow Emerson back to church to uh come up on this scene where you've got Samuel and his daughter uh feathers everywhere all I'm saying is if y'all had seen it, it was big, its eyes were glowing, it was all ready just to fuck you up, and I shot it, and some crazy shit happened. So I'm telling you, the birds are evil around here, and so is that guy. Oh, is everyone showing up at this point? Yeah, yeah, like they're walking through the uh, front doors. I just imagine Emerson was ranting the whole way up about this bird and this guy. <laughs> Listen, Emerson, I, I at no point doubted that uh, that the that these birds and this guy's evil. If what you're saying is true, I'm just, uh, you know, no, no, you know what? I I, I trust your judgment. 
I mean, all the crazy shit went down as soon as I shot it. So, and then just poof, gone. Did I have any inkling of where this spell was going, like elsewhere on the material plane or into another plane or no idea? Uh, yeah, you like, you know, enough. Uh, it's not that you know it, it's that you capital K know it. Okay. Like, your gut instinct is like that gotcha. fucking haunting grounds. Okay. But you've got like no way to validate your claim. You right. So it's not logic, it, no. it's just pure like gut instinct knowledge yeah deep level all right there's only one place he could have gone and that's to the hunting grounds so when when they all show up if they're walking through the doors uh i mean we're uh samuel and lily are still kind of just sitting there on the steps by the pulpit um and he just looks up and looks at the others kind of a like a determination in his face. I'm going after him. Who's coming? You've got my guns. I mean, you think they're going to need a haircut when we get there or something? Or, uh, I was trying to make sure I'm there and being helpful, you know? But uh, I don't know. Where are we going? I don't know how I know, but I just know to, he's gone to the hunting grounds. This is going to be a matter of, of spirit as much as uh, as lead. Those that are coming with me, steal yourselves. This will be a trying experience. Listen, Sam, obviously you got my uh, you got my kicks coming for you. Uh, I just wanted to let you know that, uh, that I'm here for you. And anyone who goes and abducts one of my fellow uh, citizens here, they, you're going to get the head cut off. How is Lily doing at this point? Um, she's starting to uh, come to like the show of support is comforting her. Mm -hmm. She's kind of let you have your space to uh, talk to your folks. And uh, she nods. I'm, I'm coming too. Emil looks at her. Who's going to look after your sister? Well, that's what, though, no, right? Um, Cody, which sister helps me out at the at the barber? That's Lily. That's the older one. Okay. Maybe, maybe, uh, one of the girls from the saloon up the Dover in the other town, uh, a couple towns over. You know, the place where I go to help out every now and then. Maybe one of those girls can. Help watcher. Um. So, I, I is this a knowledge roll for me to like know about them, or would I just know? No. And also the these the next town over, whatever she's talking about. That's like how long of a travel? Uh, the next town over, you know, has been zombified, and y'all just finished obliterating all of those folks. I just can't remember the town's name. It was the town of Rufus. Was it? No, but I remember Rufus that's where Rufus' important. shop is there. The tin man's name is Assistance. We got Rufus, Rufus's general store. We got the Prospector. As uh, I know, at least when we were going on our travels or whatever, like to the, the railroad camp, that was at least a day. And like, yeah, it's, it's like a day and a half ride uh, from here. Yeah, do I have also do do I have any inkling of like <laughs> how to get to the the hunting lands or whatever they're called? You know some people that do. Okay. Uh that you know um that it's a very unstable, very dangerous thing to do. The uh Dr. Hailstrom was has spent pretty much his whole life trying to find a way to stabilize a portal into the hunting lands. Or he wants a portal into the hunting grounds, that way he can make a portal to heaven. Uh, but you know some folks that do? Right. Okay. 
John, you've been there. You don't remember how you got there, but you know you've been there before. That's uh that that that's the spooky place where all the spirits and stuff are, right? Yeah. Yes, sir. You know, if you reach out to your contacts, it's gonna take them like a. So I guess what I'm getting at is like, would there be the time for before we're ready to go while we're prepping to, you know, send Maggie over there to another yeah. town? Yeah, you've if, got you've got like a week. Oh, OK. All right. Um, OK, I just needed that info so I could think it through. Well, then Sam- Samuel uh, says, um We'll we'll talk about it in relation to Lily wanting to come and her suggestion. I I, I promise I'll 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 be able to help. I don't I don't want to be a hindrance anymore. Yeah, Samuel actually like cracks a little bit at that. Lily, you've never been a hindrance. What makes you think that? If if you didn't have to come and stop the 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 man with the with the bombs and go do all the things to help take care of us, then maybe maybe you'd have been here to stop Grandpa before he took Mom. I might have been, but that's not on you that that's that's not your fault but but i i can i can help more if if i was if i was going to uh the the place with where where the where the uh where where the animals come from is where the animals come from yeah where you know my my friends the the uh the animals that are different like uh like you and uh like the owl ah the the chimera yeah that that's what it's called right they they come from that place yes the the hunting grounds yeah that's that's the place i i think i could be i i could be helpful I'm not saying no, hun. Let's, uh, it's going to take us a little bit to prepare to go. So let's, let's think it through and talk it through. Okay. No. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll talk about it tonight. Go, go check on your sister for me. Okay. I need to talk with John and the others. Oh, okay. And she, Goes in the back to check on her sister. Samuel turns to the others and says, uh, "Look, I, I don't, I don't know if anyone knows about the hunting grounds or has been there before, but it's bad. It's I wouldn't blame anyone if they they didn't want to come. Well, no, no harm, man." Samuel, but there there are a lot of barbering done in this spirit plane you keep mentioning. I I just I don't wanna don't wanna take everybody else's time and be not be useful. I don't really know what I bring to the table on that. Uh well <laughs> he kinda scratches his head. That's a reaction I had. <laughs> yeah. Uh I don't I don't know if they do barbering. Um it's it's not the sort of place that's really civilized. Uh, I don't know how to answer that, <laughs> but I'm I'm sure I'm sure you'd be useful. Some somehow. Uh, if you say so, you know. If uh, ah, never mind. Just 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 sleep on that. You think on if I uh will be of use to you there. Get back to me, okay. I'll do that. The the thing I tell everyone is uh, basically I I have something I need to tell tell y'all. Uh, 
Uh, I'm part of an organization. Uh, we we call ourselves the, well, I didn't pick the name. It's it's old as time, basically, but it's called the Twilight Legion, and it's an organization but more or less dedicated to fighting uh, the creatures and uh, the spread of the the dread, the the deadlands, and the all them creatures. I, I've got some contacts. Uh, I think it's time I touch base with them. John looks absolutely flabbergasted at this realization. That Samuel could have any sort of something else going on in his life. How dare you keep secrets from the sheriff, clearly. Uh, yes. Listen, Sam, you's, I just, I, I can't believe this. I thought that you's had your, your, your hands full with the, with, you know, being a man of God and a family man and, and everything. But here you are telling us that you are, you was, you was helping really save the world. This is fantastic. Now my kicks can be blessed by God and whatever else you're helping out. Um, uh, someone's, I mean... The Lord's work is saving saving souls. And there's many ways to do that. Um, so after after things calm down for a minute and he can actually like think uh beyond just like the sentence in front of him, um Samuel kind of says, Ah, oh, I almost forgot. Um I got something to show y'all. And uh, guides you all down um, into the basement of the church and uh, essentially reveals a hidden room. Yeah. Uh, if you want free uh, free reign to describe this room, you're welcome to it. Or I can describe what it looks like for you. Uh, yeah, if you want to describe it, that would probably be good. Yeah. So... Uh, this, uh, this room in the basement of the church, um, is very reminiscent of, you know, like your, uh, average end of the world stopping bunker. I uh, think Buffy the Vampire Slayers, like library area. The men of letters, uh, bunkers from Supernatural, very much utilitarian with uh, strange artifacts and strange artifacts stored on the walls and in. Uh, it kind of looks like an armory that's pulled from all through history. Yeah, like it's a. Uh, it definitely feels out of place, but there's things from all sorts of uh, eras, past, present, and future. Y'all wouldn't know it was future, but it looks weird and futuristic to your uh, country bumpkin eyeballs. Well, goddamn, Sam. Uh, in the in the corner is a. It looks like a telegraph, but it's got, in addition to the uh, tappy tap 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 tap, it also has a uh, handpiece and a gramophone. Looks like a gramophone horn on the end of it, aka it's a telephone. Oh me. Um. There's also like. I don't want to say a pile because a pile sounds haphazard, but there's a solid stash of ghost rock, um, a workshop area, a good little bit of stuff. Like I said, they've uh, they've existed a long time. And what'd you say they do again? Or this this group that you're a part of? Uh, they they try and prevent the spread of uh. Well, what, whatever you want to call them, um, manitous, demons, ghosts, what, what, whatever, the darkness that uh, haunts our world. 
So you mean to say you're out here killing demons and shit? I'm I'm not really well. I haven't really been killing demons. Um, it's uh, 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 uh Jackie it's motions perfect. to the mas- Jackie motions to the full Gettysburg Gatling gun in the wall. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I'm I'm certainly stocked for it. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, John John's gonna point at the at the Gettysburg Gatling gun and go. Oh no, Jackie, you's wrong. That's how you kill traitors. Wow. You know the uh, the South had Gatling dark. guns too, John. Just so you're aware. Not after I was done with them. <laughs> John kicked those Gatling guns, swivels, and turned them on the traitors. That's how he knows he's good at killing traitors. You got me there. You ever see a musket ball go through a man at point blank range? Yeah, I'm getting more and more convinced. This is about out of my scope, brother. I don't mean to, to let you down or nothing, but uh, I don't know. I'm I'm a guy with a with a mustache and uh, a barber chair and a barber bag I carry around. I don't know what I'm gonna be doing fighting spirits and shit. Well, here's a thought: uh, if it gives you any peace of mind, I can maybe help out, look after your family while you're gone. I mean, if it comes to it, that that so, would be appreciated. Again, just something else to consider. I feel like I, I don't know much about this place that you're going, but that bird I felt like it was the hardest thing to hit, even though it's you know wasn't a small thing. We, we might just need all hands on deck on this. Also, you guys didn't see the other tornado. That, that that's some weird. Shit. Ultimately, uh, the things in that place they want all of us. The uh, the deadlands that that we all hear of. That's that's what they do, and that's what they'll try and do here. And that's honestly why I'm here to prevent that. Um, as as Sam says, that's why I'm here to prevent that. Um, the bells on the uh, gramophone start to uh, start to chime, start ringing. All right, uh, he'll go answer it. Uh, y'all hear over the uh, like over the thing because you know it's not a precise uh, speaker; it kind of just. Sp- or like an inner Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Sam, this is... Can you hear me? Is this thing working? Yeah, I can hear you. I'm, uh... Name's Marshall Wyatt Earp. I, uh... Got word from our friends at the n- newspaper that there was a, uh... Spike in energy just now. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, there, there was um, a uh, d- do I have like a term for that? The father-in-law, like what he is or what he did. Um, Romy. Yeah, no, yeah, you would know. Like, you've got enough to know if you know what Manitos are. You know what uh, Harrod are. Yeah, awkward as this is to say, it seems my uh, my father in law's harrowed came and took my wife and took her took her to the the hunting hunting grounds. Well, hot damn, son! You, and you ain't used the Gettysburg Gatling gun standard issue that we gave you on them. <laughs> uh not yet, sir. Uh, gathering my folks here. Uh, just just showed them to the armory, actually. All right, so you you're rounding up your posse. Right. Uh, you got a you got a way into the hunt. Or uh, not yet. I was gonna work on that, but honestly, we're this is all happening pretty quick. Uh, all right, let me. Uh, I tell you what, I'll I'll grab Holiday and we'll head on over. He's supposed to be in the area, anyways. Keeping uh. Keeping dry for that cough. So, uh, we'll be over in, shouldn't be much more than a week. And we'll, we'll talk about it more then, but. All right. We'll get you uh, there. We'll get it back. I promise, son. 
Thank you, sir. Uh, we'll be looking forward to you showing up here. All right. Uh, now I got a, I got a couple boys I gotta beat down before I make my way out. So I better get to work. All right. God bless you. If he's watching, I reckon he will. And then he hangs up. All right. So we got. Well, before I uh, go into montage mode, uh, do y'all have any conversation you'd like to talk about what just happened? Um, yeah, so actually I was going to ask, uh, is, is Wyatt Earp and Doc Holliday uh, like well-known figures? Oh, absolutely. They are legends. Nope. I'm going to just jaw like on the floor, more or less, just look at Samuel and go, you's, listen, you, you's been hiding some very, very need to know information here, Samuel. I'm sorry, John. I, these, these things, you gotta be careful with them. Can't just tell anybody. Certainly couldn't tell. So the traders are fine if they're famous. Now I see. <laughs> uh, I, I, I am actually uh, out of character, not super well versed in uh, Wyatt Earp and Doc Holiday War. So uh, the shootout at OK Corral and all that. Yeah. Oh, okay. That's what too. Yep. And I think so there's it's, it's, to it's tweaked too. in the uh, the Weird West story. Yeah. Uh, Wyatt Earp um, in the Weird West. Uh, John, why you would. Uh... I think they'd be like your heroes, basically. <laughs> Uh, Wyatt Earp definitely would be because he outlawed guns in Dodge City. And uh, anybody who brings a gun into town, he beats the shit out of them with his bare hands until they learn their lesson. Pretty so cool. he is the hands to your feet of justice. Oh, that's fantastic. And and, and, and to be clear, like it, first off, uh, it does not say on here, now that I'm looking at his Wikipedia page, that uh, he fought in the Civil War. So... Uh... I don't know. Uh, yeah, I don't think he did. He didn't in real. He he didn't in real life. But like in in a world where there was a civil war when they were around, he would have. Uh, let me let me let me check. I'm pretty sure the character played as a. I don't know. You know what? Maybe I don't know. I'm pretty sure the movie didn't take place in the civil war at all. Yeah, but also like he was from Illinois. Originally, so if yeah. the Civil War was a thing, he wouldn't be on the traitor side. Well, not if the Civil War was a thing. Uh, I don't think he'd be on the traitor side. I see. Uh, so if you go on the Weird West, the main book on page nine, it talks about the graves of the wild southeast boom towns as Tombstone, Arizona. Some might think the deaths of the uh, Earps and most of the cowboy gang a few years back brought a measure of calm to the. Yeah. Oh, man. So is that before he died? Oh, uh, yeah, there's a little bit of... Uh, Wiggle room? A little yeah, bit of GM Liberty. Iconing yeah. and stuff. Yeah. At the end of the day, the book is just a book. You're the GM. Mm-hmm. I want, I want Wire to be in my game. Yeah, hey, well, like... It, it says um, on... One twelve. It talks about a feud between the Earps and the Cowboy Gang. Tombstone reached a boiling point in October eighteen eighty one. So it talks about blood was shed at the OK Corral, um, and then the feud became a war. Coleman and the Earps' vengeance ride when yet another valiant posse rode at their side. They succeeded in hunting down most of the cowboys, but all for naught. So it talks about um, the Grim Harrow took out all of the Earps and Doc Holliday too with the blazing six guns. But as for the youngsters who joined the Earps, he left them standing there as he scoffed, you ain't even worth the lead. Uh, I think you're mixing that up with another character. I don't know. I'm reading this literally out of the Weird West main book page. Oh, oh yeah, you're just getting to the point where the other character shows up at the end, I think. Of that so, sequence. I don't know. The, 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 um, they're they're weird on uh information like half of it's in uh I'm sure there's a comic book on the showdown at OK Corral somewhere. Yeah. I had to read lots of stuff for this. Yeah. The the Grim Harrow there's a chance he's still the death of Wyatt Earp. Who knows? 
But anyways, uh, with that being said, how do you folks go about preparing for your venture into the hunting grounds? Uh, one of the things that I would definitely like to ask, uh, ask Sam, uh, or see if that maybe I have some kind of knowledge about it, considering that I've accidentally been there once or twice. Um, can physical means harm shit on the hunting grounds, or is it like you trying to punch a ghost? You know that you were able to punch shit in the hunting grounds. Uh, there's not much recorded, uh, knowledge. Um, I think the skills actually considered forbidden knowledge is the one would be the one that you would take for rolling for hunting grounds information. Yeah, I don't have that. However, if there is a historical, um, like spirit kick and boots or something, it's possible that there's something like that in my armory. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Basically, Sam's armory has your MacGuffins that you need for being successful in the uh, hunting grounds. I'm leaving it up to y'all what you want those MacGuffins to be. It's like 2,000 years of uh, human weaponry designed and intended for fighting those things. Well, in terms of Jackie, until... There is a reason given to him as to why he should go into this ghost realm when he's a barber. He's of the mind that he's probably not going. Yeah, that's fair. I I think Emerson would just want to know more about the hunting grounds. Like, what is there and what does it entail? So, I mean, yeah, I, so far what I had RP'd was basically, like, what made sense in those first, like, half hour. Um, I'm sure over the following week he would share anything and everything that he knew uh, and or was asked about about the hunting grounds? Yeah, he's actually got a uh, a silent film and uh, story script. Oh, shit. Uh, that is the uh, Twilight Legion training video? <laughs> it's like your, uh, your animated cartoon that pops up every now and then with uh, information what to do if you find yourself on the wrong side of the right side of the deadlands. Yeah, eventually we're going to we're gonna hire Disney to make an instructional animation for us. Um, yeah, so you go through and you find the tape that kind of walks you through how to, uh, what to do if you find yourself in a... Uh, Deadlands or in the hunting grounds. Uh, it also explains that a Deadland on our side is thinnest and it is most reflective of what its uh, hunting grounds uh, reflection looks like. Um, it explains, yeah, uh, it seems that normal weapons when brought into the hunting grounds uh, obtain mystic properties based on the spirit of their wielder. And it explains that the navigation is much, uh, much like another form of navigation. Most of us know Uh, it's navigation by familiarity. So, you want to get somewhere, you learn about where you want to go, and you focus your will to take you to the place you want to be, or else you'll wind up lost. And getting lost is not what you want to do in the hunting grounds, where after uh, where a five-minute walk can take you from Texas to Taiwan. So, yeah, uh, basically... Any questions y'all want to ask about the uh, hunting grounds, I'll give you a plus two bonus on the knowledge rolls. Um, are the Harrowed aligned with a particular something over there? Or is like Harrowed just a general thing that can any human involved with 
following any mana to or whatever? Um, base knowledge. Uh, I can arrow. roll for it too. I'm just yeah. Uh, base knowledge heralds are regular. Well, not necessarily regular folks. Uh, they've lived a life that uh, after they meet their end, something decides that it's no longer uh, that the end isn't the end. Uh, From what the Legion's been able to gather, they are generally related to a Manito. They are a pain in the ass to kill. Okay. And if you want to roll for more, you're welcome to. If you're satisfied with that, you can be satisfied with that. I, I will roll for more. I think I did that correct. Uh, you did. Plus two would be none, so that would give you a raise. Um, you know that Manito are generally linked. Well, heroes are linked to Manitos. Manitos are generally linked to some form of spiritual legend throughout history. Like the, the big ones now are the, uh, grim harrowed, which is, uh, captain Jasper stone. I think hailstrom. Um, what's the other one's name? Uh, well, there was grim and then there was, it's, uh, the Native American one. Yeah, I don't remember his name. The Servitors. Uh, you've got Hellstrom. Um, oh, Reverend Grimm. Yeah. Um, yeah. That was out in L.A., that one. Yeah, Raven and uh, Stone. And they... Uh, they represent the four. Their manitos are thought to be the four horsemen. Great. Okay. He did have a raven on his shoulder. Yeah. Um. It is. You do know that uh, if you meet a harrowed in the in the hunting lands, uh, hunting grounds, it is easier to their uh, connection. Okay. That makes sense. What their connection? Uh, tell what their connection is, like who they're connected to, what like basic knowledge of uh, you basically you get more Colin cards to learn about the Manito they're uh, attached to. Well, according to the notes from last section, Samuel immediately knew it was a Manito. So by that, that's kind of high up on the food chain. Going by this. Yeah. All right. Anybody else? Uh, Val, how? What are you doing? Um, you know that that's a good question. Um, Val has some experience with uh, Deadland and spiritual matters, so she's probably got some semblance of idea of what she should be doing. So she's probably at home preparing uh, materials. Um. <clears throat> and weapons and occasionally pop it into the armory, taking stock of anything she might need. Uh, since her pacifism kind of ends with weird stuff. So she should be able to engage in things. So she's probably getting items repaired. You tell me, can they be undead if they've never lived? I guess technically they can't be living if they never lived either. Who knows? That's a very, very like weird hole to go down. And I, I, don't think we should go down that hole. All right. So yeah, you've got uh, you've gathered some healing salves. You found a couple recipes uh, from ancient times in Sam's uh, in one of the books. And yeah, you get uh, uh yeah in your doctor's bags. Uh, how is Sid preparing? Um, Sid's probably gonna go back to her bar, probably pack up, like, a drink or two, and make sure 
She's also got plenty of bullets for her gun, grabs her whip, and makes her way back. All right. Um, did you want to, like, make any weird science gadgets while, uh, while you're preparing? Uh, basically, as a weird scientist, you have the ability to um, pretty much suspend one of your uh, PowerPoints, and you can make the get to give the spell to somebody else to hold on to, if that makes sense. Basically, so, like, sp- like one of my uh, powers? Yeah, you spend your... Uh, you spend the PowerPoint now... And you make a thing, so like burst. Uh, you would spend a PowerPoint to make a little uh, bomb for one of the others to use, and they get to use a one-time use of your spell. Now, what if burst costs me two PowerPoints? Is it still only one for me to make them a little thing? Uh, it would cost two, but pretty much you've got it. You've got a week of. Uh, Spending your powerpoints and then re uh, renewing them. Gotcha. Okay. So like yeah, it costs, but within reason, you can give one-time uses of your powers to the rest. Thank you for taking the time to enjoy our show. If you liked what you heard, why not tell your friends, or hit the like button. If you loved it, or have ways we can improve, leave a comment on the episode or a review to help us get out to more ears. I'm always looking for feedback to improve the show. Speaking of feedback, you could also send that to a pair of dice lost on Twitter, or a pair of dice lost at gmail.com. The theme music for this game is Born Barnstormers by Brian Boyko, used under a Creative Commons license. And finally, for making it this far, why don't you go ahead and refill all your bennies for the week? Um, why don't I have Christina's notes bookmarked? I don't know. L- listen, Sam, I that I'm absolutely just gobsmacked by this realization that, that you you spots of some kind of secret conspiracy to help. Help save the world? I mean, I thought that... Brent, I didn't didn't think you were doing this other accent. Sometimes I can't fucking help it with you all around. Yeehaw, brother. I didn't want to interrupt you, but Brent said something, so I was like, fuck it, I'm gonna say it. Cody, I uh, gotta say, A plus on the text and accent, my man. Good stuff. (laughs) Yeah, you just gotta, you gotta really gravel it up. You gotta act like you got a toothpick in your mouth. That's the secret. Yeah, you can't move the bottle and have your jaw. You goddamn right. Because it's filled with beef. With backy. <laughs> All right, so we got oh. a welcome to Samuel's character. Yeah. Ah, I see. It makes you feel better. I have no backstory for Emerson. She doesn't remember anything before she came to town so i'm just like have nice. fun cody <laughs> yeah. we'll get there we'll discover why she's got that innate fear of birds i mean her origin literally says the fuck she knows so that's uh it's nice i like it just dump it all on the dm just like good luck yeah, it's it's really fun to do. occasionally it's fun to do. yeah it is yeah that uh, good old rap scallion child animator Walt Disney. Yeah, I'm I'm really glad you ended that sentence the way that you did. 